Hi everyone, my name is Justine and I want to welcome you to our demonstration class for the foundation studies today. I'm going to be joined by my colleague Shanal. He's our academic coordinator for the foundation studies program at Deakin College. Um, and we wanted to give you a demonstration class um, as to what it would be like studying at Deakin College at the moment. Now, obviously this won't be a full class. This is going to be a much shorter version and hopefully Chanel, it will be a lot of fun, but it will give you an indication of what it's like at the moment to study online. While Chanel, I've just realised that I've been talking and I've been on, I've done one of those Zoom things where I've been on mute. No, we, sorry, we could hear you. I just muted all because I had new students jumping in and I didn't realise <laughs> you muted you. I don't know where I got up to, Chanel. I think it was, I... it was just at the part you were talking about, um, it'll be fun and we're just going through. Yeah, perfect. So as you all know, we, we are online, Deakin College and Deakin University, we're online for trimester three. So this will just be a little bit of a taster of what it's like to study. Now, you don't need to be studying foundation to enjoy this demonstration class. We do have a communications one tomorrow and then health also on Friday. Um, but this just will give you an indication at the moment what it's like um, to study online. So this is an interactive session and I'm sure Chanel would love if we can have some videos on um, yeah, if you guys could, I think that would be great awesome. if you we could turn on your cameras. Yeah, we won't pick on anyone, but it'd be great if we can just try and get some um, participation out of this. I will be on the chat line if anyone needs to post a question, um, post anything you want. I've got my colleague Susie also is joining us today so we can um, look at those chats for you as well. So enjoy and enjoy the next 30 to 40 minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Justine. And thanks everyone for joining. I think we've got um, 39 people in the in the room, which is excellent. Um, I think, like I said, I, I see one student's already raised their hand for a question. If you guys could just put your questions into the chat uh, and I'll try and get back to you on those. Um, we'll have a little bit of time at the end for Q&A. So first of all, can everyone hear me okay? If you can hear me, can you just give me a little thumbs up, please? Excellent, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, well, let's get started. Um, Justine, if you don't mind just adding people in as they're jumping in, because um, I can see some people jumping into the weight room. All right. So, welcome. Now, just let yep. me know, I can't as a co-host, so I've made you the host. I'm sorry. Ah. That. You're going to have to um, let me in. I've made you a co-host, so you okay, should be perfect. able to I'll do that now. Do that now. Right. Okay. Um, so, Welcome to a foundation demo class. My name is Chanel Liduana. I'm the academic coordinator of the foundation program. Um, and today I'm going to give you guys a little sample of uh, one of our marketing classes. So marketing is um, one of our units that is part of our business electives. So in foundation, some of you may know already that um, students have a lot of different electives to choose from depending on the area of interest that, or the area that they want to go and study in at university. Um, and business and commerce being one of them, marketing is uh, one of those electives. Now, uh, the reason why I chose this um, to, to demonstrate to you is because um, I am or was a marketing teacher um, and I've taught it uh, at tertiary level and also at secondary level. So hopefully you'll learn something and if not, at least you'll get an idea of what the classes are like. Um, and get a little bit of taste of, you know, how we teach and learn uh, online at the moment. Okay, so I'll just click ahead. So just to give you a little bit of um, context as to what we're covering and, um, and how it all fits in. So the topic we're going to look at today is called new product. Um, so this is actually our week six topic in the marketing unit. So this would be what this would be what students cover, um, yeah, just after half, just at about the halfway mark of the trimester. So the foundation trimester goes for um, twelve physical weeks, and then we have one week of self-directed study. So this would be like right in that middle. Um, so by this point, you would normally have an understanding of some concepts. So if things seem a little bit like uh, if they don't make sense, don't worry. Um, you would normally have looked at a lot of other things leading up to this. 
but I'll try and make it uh, as you know informative as possible and hopefully as engaging as possible. All right. So today we're going to do about a 45 minute lesson. Um, and we're actually going to start our lesson with a group discussion. So, you know, in the next slide, you'll see I've got a question for you guys to talk about in groups. And what I'm going to be doing is putting you into something called breakout rooms. Can I just get a show of hands for those who have their cameras on? If you've been into a breakout room before, if you've ever used a breakout room before. Okay, cool. Um, so I think most people haven't. I think I saw a couple of hands there. Um, if you've never been into a breakout room, what it is is basically a uh, like a little group within Zoom itself, so within the same lesson. And you can either be randomly allocated or auto allocated into them. So for the purpose of this lesson, I'm going to randomly allocate you. But um, obviously in class, if you're working on a group project or a group assignment, we can have those set up and you can be put into those groups, you know, pretty regularly. Um, so I'm going to give you about five minutes in your breakout groups to have a discussion and I'll jump into those groups and after that we'll come together and just share, you know, what you discussed. After that, we'll go into a little bit of a, a lecture. I won't bore you with too much marketing information, I promise, um, but I'll give you a little bit of information there and afterwards we'll do a, you know, a fun quiz. Nothing serious. All right. And as I said at the end, if you have any questions, I'll hang back and you can ask me anything you want in relation to online learning. Um, if you have anything, you know, specifically for the foundation program, I can answer them or just general um, studying at Deakin College as well. All right. Okay. So I think we have five more people in the breakout room once, uh, sorry, in the waiting room. So once they jump in, we can do this. So this is the question that I would like you guys to discuss. Um, so, as I said in a minute, you'll see a pop-up on your screen that says join breakout room. So when you see that, please click it and it'll take you into that breakout room. So in your groups, I want you to identify or come up with five new products that, five new products that you think are new or whatever. Um, they might not be, you know, it doesn't have to be correct, um, but five new products that came out in the last year. All right, so come up with five new products that came out in the last year. You might already be able to think of five yourself. If so, cool, share that with your um, you know, group members and come up with a, a consensus answer for five products, okay? Now, like I said, I'm gonna give you five minutes for this and I'll jump into each room um, and just get you know, your, your thoughts. And then when we come back, I'll ask a member from each group just to share what their five products were. Nice and easy. All right. So we'll just add these last students that are jumping in. Cool. And let's put you into your breakout rooms. So we've now got 42 students. We'll keep it at five groups. Create the groups, that's fine. Okay, so you should be going into your breakout room soon. You should automatically go into them. And if not, you might get a pop-up. So just click that. Um, and I'll jump in and say hi to all of you in a little bit. Okay, so maybe take a screenshot of this if you wanted to, if you can't remember the question because you won't be able to see this slide. But what you need to do nice and easy is come up with five new products that you think came out in the last year. All right, let's go. Okay, I think we're all on mute. Okay. All right, so what do we do? <laughs> did you pay a, Did anyone pay attention? <laughs> yeah, we need to think of, um, was it five products or four products that have come out in the last 12 months? So. Sorry, Justina, okay. put you in a breakout room as well. <laughs> That's all right, I, it's actually better. You know what you should have done? Put Susie in one, me in one. and I can do that. One. Who else is on? Susie, Fong, can you make sure that others talk in yours and I'll make sure mine talk in yours. All right, I'll put okay. Susie and Fong in. Yeah, so okay. hello everyone. Oh, 
All right. So Tiana, Megan, Kimley, Irene, have you got any thoughts on products that came out in the last 12 months? Oh, is that, is that, I've just been to this group. Um, is anyone talking in this group? I mean, we started. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of idea? Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah, hi. My mic was bugging out, so. That's okay. Who wants to be a spokesperson or did you want that to be me? I don't mind. Just... All right, Abby, great. We'll, great. Like, we'll put that in soon. Um, all right, what did you come up with? We kind of talked about like new technology that's been upgraded and come out. I don't think we've really talked about it that much yet. I know. I was just trying to think when the Apple iPhone 11 came out, was that over 12 months ago now? Could have been. I think it was just over 12 months. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. not going to work. <laughs> Is there a new Apple Watch that's come out, Race? Isn't there like a Series 5 or something that's coming out? <laughs> I was going to say, there'd have to be a Fitbit or something like that. Yeah, Apple Watch. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I don't know if it counts, but there's new, like, consoles coming out, but they haven't been released yet. I mean, if people have been able to pre-order them, surely that counts. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, I was thinking. Right. Um... Are the new AirPod Pros less than 12 months old? I can't yeah, even... I think there is. I just did a cheeky Google search. I think there is. <laughs> there's nothing app. wrong with that. So are you allowed to cheat? <laughs> yes. Oh, I see. Right. Um, yeah, there's this new Apple AirPods, I think called Echo Beats. So. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, Abby, there's one for you to say. Um, what about, there's a couple of other people I haven't heard from. Is What about you guys? Can you think of anything? If, if people type in the chat, does it come up yeah, to everyone? Yeah, if you want to type or... in the chat, if you're too shy to take your mic it... off, if you want to type in the chat. If you're in a breakout group, though, does it only go to the breakout group or does it go? Oh, to... it will go to the whole, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. In the breakout group. Is there like a little thing that you can change or yeah. on, just like individual people? No, on Zoom, unfortunately, that's how Zoom works. It goes to the whole, everyone, all the participants in there sort of thing. Does the new iOS 14 update count as well? I think so, yeah. Um, would clothes count? Because there'd be heaps of, like, clothes and stuff. Surely masks. <gasps> masks. <laughs> A bunch of people with new masks. <laughs> yes. You're right. I think we could say we can say some clothes or something because you're right. They've always new fashion coming out. Um... I'm terrible as well. I can't think of anything. Didn't they build a spaceship that came back? Didn't Elon? <laughs> Does that count? Yeah. That would I, don't know, I, I can't really think of anything else. <laughs> have you done any more cheating, Lachlan? Have you done any more <laughs> Google I, I, I can. I can. <laughs> New things from 2020. Is my mic weird, by the way? I don't, I don't uh, really know. No? Nah? Okay. Nah. I'm fine. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, there's not really a whole lot here, to be honest. Mm. I get. We're going to get back, and Chanel's going to have this long list, and we're going to go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like four things. We've got Apple Watch, AirPods, iOS 14, and then you um S5. Yep. There's a new Xbox too. <laughs> oh, there you go. Stuff. <laughs> All right, we've got to go back. So we just leave the breakout room now, guys, and that'll take us back. So, Abby, if you don't mind being that spokesperson, that'd be great. That's fine. So press the leave the breakout room. All right. So um, I jumped into a couple of groups there, and I think Justine, Susie, and Fum were also in a, a few of the other groups. So hopefully you guys had a bit of discussion. 
Um, so just a bit of advice, guys. If, when you do do this in class, it's really good if you have your cameras on and if you can talk to each other because it really helps, you know, feeling that discussion. Um, and, you know, we can do these a couple of times in the class and then come back and really share. So I was able to jump into a couple of groups. I'm going to pick on a, a couple of people that I met in those groups to maybe share what you came up with. Um, and then I'll maybe just check with the other groups as well to see if there's anyone there who's able to share. Um, so maybe let's go with um, Maria. Maria, I know um, in your group, I was in there as well for a little bit. You guys discussed a couple of new products. Um, what did you discuss from memory? If you um, can give us maybe two or three is fine. Yeah, um, first we discussed like all the new Elon Musk conventions because they're always relevant and they're always popular. Uh, like the Tesla car came in last year and also gave us a hint about COVID because of like coronavirus, a lot of new stuff starts to go on, like new face mask, you know, like, like once with a shield. Um, and um, I guess there's a lot of new hand sanitizer companies uh, with their products. So, yeah. Perfect. That's awesome. So I think, yeah, we're, we're kind of in this really interesting situation because of COVID that a lot of companies have had to create new products. And yeah, definitely the, that example of hand sanitizer is excellent because there might be, you know, companies that had never created hand sanitizer before and they've put it out as a new product. Same for like, you know, your face masks. Um, we'll look at that in some slides that are coming up. Um, the other student that I said I would ask is Mr. Siang. Where are you? There you are, Siang Kim. Um, if you wouldn't mind maybe giving us one or two new products that came out in the last year. Um, thank you. Uh, so I think the new product that just came out, uh, iPhone. Okay, and which one? Which iPhone? Uh, I, I don't remember. Ah, oh, come <laughs> on, man. As, as if you don't know which iPhone is the newest one that's out. I'm okay, sure. excellent. Yep. And the Tesla, the car that named it Tang. Okay, all right. And the last one is the fridge, the L LG fridge that it's called itself uh, ThinQ Alexa. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Yang. Those are some good examples. So I haven't heard of that LG fridge, but I might have to have a look at it. Because, um, yeah, I mean, as marketers, we should know what new products are coming out all the time, I guess. Um, just going to somebody else. Um, Georgina, what did you guys discuss in your group? Um, we talked about new technologies, pretty much like the new consoles that are coming out and awesome. um, AirPods, that sort of thing. As, and like face masks as well with all the COVID. Excellent, great. Um, yeah, so I've got a couple of examples on that coming up as well. Yes, definitely this year is a big year for consoles. You've got like your PlayStation 5 and Xbox um, coming out later this year. So those are good examples of new products and they're not out yet, but they will be out soon. Right? Good stuff. All right. So um, thank you for your discussions, guys. Um, ideally, in a class, we'd have more time to go around and share these things. But because it's a shorter class, we'll just move on to um, a little bit of the information. And then we'll move on to our quiz afterwards. OK? If you want me to slow down at any point, or if you want me to um, go, th go through something again, um, just unmute yourself and let me know. Um, or you can put it in the chat, and someone will flag it with me. So just starting off um, a bit of like a lecture here, um, what is a new product? So um, there are many variations on what is meant by new products. And I think we saw that in our group answers. There were a couple of students who came up with like brand new products and there were others who talked about things that companies haven't done before. So we'll try and classify them and um, come up with a, a term that fits that kind of new product, okay? so. The first example is something that is new to the world. Um, so these are your inventions or um, products that haven't really existed before. So I'm giving you an example here of a company that was established in Melbourne as a result of um, COVID-19. And this started, I think, in about March or April of this year. Has anyone heard of Provador before? Hands up if you have. All right, a couple of hands there, excellent. So. 
Um, Provador is basically a, a food delivery service for fine dining restaurants. Okay. Now, when COVID originally hit, a bit of a story, I like to tell stories, um, the fine dining restaurants in Melbourne weren't faring too well. Uh, as you can imagine, for people to eat at a fancy restaurant, you know, they would be paying hundreds of dollars and the restaurants were getting zero dollars in income, um, which isn't great, right? So they had to come up with something to make sure that they could survive. So this idea kind of came to fruition with a couple of the chefs in the fine dining restaurants. And um, the idea here is to basically provide people at home a fine dining restaurant experience. But how is it different to your standard food delivery, like your Uber Eats, uh, your Deliveroo's, and all of the other food delivery companies that exist? What these guys started doing was um, creating products, sorry, um, putting together meals that were 80% complete. All right, so they're not fully complete in the sense that you can't just get it and eat it because it actually comes cooled in a box and what you need to do at home is finish off the dish. So whether that's like boiling the pasta and mixing it in with the sauces or getting the roast chicken or, and tossing it into the oven for an extra 20 minutes just to finish it off. All right, so that was really creative and a new kind of product that didn't exist here, at least in Australia um, or in Melbourne and possibly around the world. Okay, so that's a really, really good example of something that is an invention. The second kind of new product is what we call a new category or brand entry. Now, this is something that a lot of the groups, I'm sure, brought up. All right. Um, and what we're talking about here is when a company that's creating a certain type of product goes into creating a different type of product that they haven't made before. All right, and it's still under their company name. So here we can look at something like Adidas. What kind of um, products did Adidas or do Adidas usually make? Sportswear, apparel, right? Um, and um, a face mask isn't, wasn't really considered a fashionable item or wasn't really considered as like sports apparel, you know, um, last year, for example. But because it became something that people needed to wear, the company adjusted or adapted and started creating Adidas face masks. And I believe these are ones that you can even wear if you're working out or exercising. Okay, so that's really creative as well. And that's a new product for Adidas, taking them into a really strange type of category, like a, a medical um, apparel kind of category there, but a good example nonetheless. The third product or the third type of new product is what we call a product improvement. Now, this is exactly what um, I think Georgina mentioned in her group. Um, this is where a, a product that is existing has been redesigned, updated, and launched as like a new version of that product. All right, so if you look at the example here, I've got the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox that's coming. This is also the same example you can apply to um, Siang's example of iPhone, all right, where it's coming out each year. You've got your iPhone 5, 6, 7, X, and now the 11. So each time that they release the iPhones, it's been updated, redesigned, etc. Okay. Um, and the last one is variations to existing products. So this is where the company doesn't really make changes to the physical product itself. Um, it's where they might just repackage the new product. So like change the styling of the existing product or the box that it's displayed in, um, or they'll start selling it to a new kind of customer. All right, so this is something, these words like repositioning are things you would have looked at in week um, four and three leading up to this topic. So um, I wouldn't expect any of you guys to know these words you know, straight off the bat. Um, and the example I've given you here is McDonald's, all right? So the McDonald's, some of the McDonald's meals have stayed the same for a very long time in terms of like the actual meal itself, like a Big Mac meal, right? But the takeaway bags that they provide the meal in have changed pretty frequently, all right? So you can see here that the design of the packaging for the Big Mac has changed from the 1950s to the 70s to the 80s to what it is today. All right, everyone following okay so far? Good, okay, awesome. 
Um, we can also talk about how companies can obtain new products. So obviously the, the you know, most common way that we think about companies obtaining new products is the second option there, which is through an internal new product development process. So the company actually designs and creates the new products. Whereas a company can also obtain new products by purchasing another company. All right. Um, and of course, you can talk here about companies like Disney, you know, purchasing all of basically every single um, um, studio existing like Marvel um, and Lucas arts like Star Wars and stuff like that. But a good example here is Facebook. Um, you may or may not know that Facebook has acquired WhatsApp, Instagram, and Oculus. All right, so um, Instagram started up as its own company. WhatsApp started up, WhatsApp started up as its own company. Uh, and Facebook, the parent company, decided to buy these for a lot of money. So those are new products for Facebook. All right, so just some examples there. Now, the reason why I'm going through this, and I would advise that you try to pay a little bit of attention, is because we're going to go through some of this in our quiz. All right. Okay. Any questions so far? Nope. Awesome. So why is it important for companies to develop new products? Um, a company cannot rely solely on its existing products. Um, in week two, we would have looked at a topic um, called the marketing environment. And you'd now be able to see how those changes in the, the marketing environment have an effect um, and what companies can do to adjust to that. So obviously there are changes that might require companies to create new products like COVID-19. Um, consumers' tastes are changing very rapidly and we cover consumer behavior in week four. So you'd be able to look at that and again, link it. And the final one is increased levels of competition. So obviously when, you know, companies start competing, you have to come up with new products to survive. And a great example of that in Australia, at least, and maybe it's the same for those of you who are jumping in from overseas, uh, is how Uber and other rideshare services really disrupted that taxi industry, right? So I remember, you know, not being, not even being able to order a taxi on an app, which is a bit crazy. Um, you had to call 1-3 cabs in Australia and um, they wait on the phone and then they ask you where you live and then they send the taxi to your house, right? And then the moment Uber entered into the market, getting a cab or getting ride share or getting from A to B became way more convenient, right? And so what did the taxi industry have to do? They have to come up with their own apps to try and compete, right? So that's actually like forcing new product development and innovation as a result of competition. Uh, and of course, <laughs> on the right hand side, we have a good example here of a, of a product that's kind of, well, it's, it's not dead, it's there, but it's not there to the, the um, level that it was maybe, some of you may ne never have heard of Kodak, but I mean, if you've gone to do like digital printing at a um, print store, like, uh, an office works or something like that. You may or may not have used a Kodak kiosk, but obviously all cameras before they were digital used real and Kodak was like the most popular company for that. Has anyone heard of or not heard of Kodak before? I yeah, have. You have? <laughs> really um, <laughs> uh, you're old though, Susie. <laughs> um, Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, that's probably the good thing is, you know, even if you've never heard of something, learning a little bit about like products that existed, and this wasn't a long time ago. If you look at the date there, it's 2012. Um, you know, it's, it gives you a, a, an appreciation for what companies have done and what products are around now. And things like that. Okay. So I think there's only like two more slides and we're going to go into questions. So not all new products succeed. All right. A lot of products, new products are successful. Companies spend a lot of time and money looking into it, you know, researching, asking customers questions, but not all of them succeed. Here's an example or a few examples of things that haven't succeeded. The umbrella hat, all right? Um, the umbrella hat is obviously a product that came out a little while ago. And if it succeeded today, everyone would be wearing an umbrella hat, but obviously it didn't succeed, all right? Um, 
it's still around, but it's more of a gimmick for kids, right? It's not something that you see everybody wearing. Another example of a product that didn't succeed. Thankfully, Colgate Pizza, all right? Um, I, I'm a pretty adventurous person, so there's a good chance I would have tried this if I saw this in a supermarket, um, but that emoji reaction is probably what we would have got at the end, all right? Um, and thankfully, that product is no longer around because for those of you who, who may or may not be familiar, Colgate is a toothpaste brand, right? And you don't want anyone that's making toothpaste making food because that would be a little bit strange, especially if it's under that same name. You'd just be expecting everything to taste like mint. And probably a more relevant or new example of something that didn't succeed is Google Glass. Um, so you may or may not remember this, but I think it was around maybe 2012 or 11 or 13, around that time, there was like this hype, huge hype. Google was like, we've got these glasses or this thing you can clip onto your glasses. And it's like having your phone, but on your eye and you can kind of navigate, it'll come up on your like, you know, glass lens and you can like direct yourself to different places or you can ask it for reviews and it'll just pop up on your face. Great idea but it didn't work. Uh, I think they had a, a prototype, like a trial product. And then obviously somebody wore it to a cinema and um, the cinema owner thought that they were pirating the video or like filming the video, like the movie. And the FBI came in and all this stuff happened. And there've been many other cases where the product just wasn't appropriate for, you know, mass consumption. So um, maybe they're working on it, but I haven't seen of anything coming out soon. That's definitely a product that was supposed to come out and then it kind of did and then it failed, okay? All right. So why do new products sometimes fail? Um, just some points here and, and I'll talk about the example on the right-hand side in a second. Um, so one of the reasons new products fail is because it's not different to existing products. So. If, an, if a company develops a new product or, you know, they come up with a new idea, but actually it's too similar to something that already exists, there's a good chance that the thing that exists will just adjust to that um, and there won't be enough demand, right? So that's one of the reasons why a new product can fail. Um, it might not deliver on promises. So, you know, a company can come out and say, um, this product is going to do all of these really cool things, but actually when you get it, it doesn't really live up to it. All right, so that would be a reason as to why it fails. Um, poor value or overestimating demand, which um, you know happens like when a company goes into a new country and thinks that it's gonna be super popular, um, but actually it isn't that popular in that country. And I think Starbucks is a good example of that. Um, uh, for those of you who are in Australia or know about it, um, you know, this is a bit of an old example or an old case. Um, Starbucks is a multinational, world-famous coffee um, company in the sense that they kind of created that cafe culture. Um, they thought they could come into Australia and be uber successful because Australians love drinking coffee, um, but it didn't quite work out. And there, there are a few different reasons for that. One of it could be, you know, they weren't really looking at the benefits there or they overestimated how many people would take it up. And the last one is poor positioning, poor marketing, research, and execution. But that, I think, is a bit complicated to discuss because we haven't looked at those previous words um, in this session. But in class, we definitely go through that. All right. Okay. Everyone feel like they're ready for a quiz? Some of you guys might have just, like, zoned out a little bit. If you have, this quiz is going to totally catch you off guard. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, it's just a fun quiz. It's just a Kahoot quiz. So if you have um, played Kahoot quizzes before, you'll know exactly what to do. For those of you who haven't, um, instructions are pretty simple. You'll need to go onto Kahoot.it. You can do this on your phone. I actually suggest that you do it on your phone rather than on your computer. And in a minute, I'll load the screen and you'll see a, a, a pin that pops up and you'll need to enter that pin into your um, phone where it says enter pin, right? And from there, you basically go through, we'll go through a quiz where all, it's multiple choice. All you need to do is tap the, the color or button that you feel represents the right answer. It's pretty self-explanatory. So 
let's get started. I'm just going to share my um, screen sound. So if it is a bit loud, if you could just put that into the audio, uh, into the chat, sorry, and I will turn down the volume and play around with it. All right. this up here. Okie dokes. Everyone see that okay? Yes, can you hear the music kind of? No? Now? Oh, wait. I'll have to do this. Yes? Alright, if you could please go to kahoot.it and enter the pin, which is 264267. We've got 35 on people, so that should be fine for that. videos and questions, so if you could, um, you can watch, wait to watch the whole video and answer them, but if you know the answer earlier, you can definitely jump into the answer as well. Alright, but I would suggest that you wait for the video. Alright, let's go. For the past nine weeks, the kitchen at Estelle in Northcote has been bubbling away despite not having any diners. Scott Pickett started offering take-home meals to get through the shutdown period. Food that's available in the restaurant and then you could cook to reheat or cook to serve and be a chef. Hey, great job. So five of you guys got the answer right. Well done. Um, a couple of people got the answer wrong, but that's okay. Um, so Provenor, as I said in our slides, was something that was new to the world. It um, was a brand new product that started as a result of COVID. Um, so in the lead is Jolene with 868 points. Then we've got Maria, Georgie, Hao Chin, and Ung. All right, next question. Maybe a trickier question. Excellent, well done. Um, for those of you who are interested, the last point, the last um, part of the video there, you can see it here already. So it's clearly perfume. Mercedes-Benz makes cars, but when they started making perfume, that was an example of a new category of brand entries. Well done. Ooh, Georgie's jumped up, but Jolene's still holding the fort, so she's up ahead. Um, Maria's in third place, Hao Chin and Um. 
Three more questions. You may or may not know this company. If you, if you watch the video, actually you'll see that what they're doing is they're not creating anything new. They're not coming up with new flavors. They're not coming up with, you know, new um, ingredients or anything like that. All they're changing is the packaging to make it more convenient for customers. So in the video, you'll see that it's more environmentally friendly, that it's uh, stacks easier, like in your fridge and it won't spill those kinds of stuff. So it's just a variation to the existing product. All right, well done. Jolene's killing it and Georgie's close behind. BW's jumped up there and we still got Maria and Houchin in the race. Two questions, this one's easy, true or false? We're all good at true or false. Many of you are aware that uh, we just found out that Oculus Rift, uh, the Oculus VR company, has been acquired by Facebook for $2 billion. There have been yeah. a lot of talk that they would be acquired, or something I fully expected. Facebook was not the company that ever registered on my radar. No, and you know, it's kind of interesting. We were talking about this earlier when it first broke, and everyone was going, oh, what does this mean for games? And I stood up and I said, this is Facebook trying to be, in my opinion, trying to be Google, where they're diversifying their interests and, try, and looking at Oculus not as a gaming a gaming peripheral, but as something that could be used possibly uh, medicinally, you know, in, in medical procedures, or even as well, on, on a retail level. Say, like you're a realtor and you want to show off right. a potential home to some buyers. There's a lot there. I, right. I, I think we all saw these. That was okay. Most people got this correct. Well done. So um, I don't know if any of you have had the chance of using the Oculus platform, but it's a really cool virtual reality. Um, platform that Facebook now owns, well, as of a few years ago. All right, last question. We're seeing some people jump, so that's good. All right, so Georgie and Jolene, this is really close. BW, you're still in there, and Hachin, you're in there as well. Lachlan, you, if you get this quick enough, you might be able to pip Jolene and Georgie to this. Here we go, last question. fall in love with it. The coffee giant still has stores in 63 countries, leaving very few nations frappuccino free. There's more than 11,500 stores across the US alone, and they're rapidly growing in Canada and China. But struggling to survive in Australia, Starbucks have closed 60 odd shops, leaving its current stable of just 22. Paul Patterson is a marketing guru that spent years studying the demise of Starbucks. I think we've got a lot to, lot to thank Starbucks for. I mean, they, uh, they grew the category. They basically invented the lifestyle cafes that we know today. But then the competition saw this was a successful formula and, um, and copied them. The Coffee Club, Gloria Jeans, even the independent cafes. So they really struggled against the, the, you know, the competition. There's at least 6,500 independent cafes across Australia, generating about $4 billion annually, mainly from coffee sales. And on average, Australians drink around three to four cups a day. Many people see Australians as coffee snobs, and really we are, because that's what we've become. We're spoiled rotten here, but there's great coffee all the time. Campos is one of the most successful roasters in the business. It's the uh, professionalism that, uh, that Campos Coffee has with its baristas, with its staff. The specialty coffee industry in Australia has raised the bar so high that Starbucks coming in at such a low level where perhaps the baristas aren't so professional and they're not as dedicated to their craft as we are. It's going to be tough for them. Time's up. So there were two correct answers and you guys got them. Well done. Um, bit of a trick answer there, a trick question. Um, yes, it wasn't so different to the existing products because we have a lot of franchises already, like Gloria Jeans, Coffee Club, etc. Um, but also we talked about how it was poor value or overestimated demand. So excellent stuff. Let's see who our winner is. Drum roll. Third place, BW, in second place, and our 
winner right from the start is... Australia that you come and meet us and we'll get you a nice Deacon College gift, I promise. Um, uh, whether that's like a water bottle or a backpack or something, okay? So that's it for the Kahoot quiz. And basically that's it for our lesson. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, I'm happy to hang back and answer any questions you might have. Um, but I, hopefully that's given you a taste of what we run our classes like. Obviously our classes are a little bit longer, but so it's a bit of a mix of these things. You'll have times that are dedicated lectures. You'll have times where you're working on things in groups. You'll have times where you're working on things individually. And of course you'll have, you know, times to, um, we're, we're trying to make things as fun as possible and as engaging as possible. Okay. So you will have the opportunity to do that as well. Alrighty. Any questions? Just go back to the first slide. Anything you guys want me to answer? All right, awesome. Um, if there's nothing else, Justine, I think we can wrap up the yeah, no, thank awesome. you. Um, I'm no wonder I didn't study marketing. I didn't do very well in that quiz at all. I think I got one or two. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if there, oh, look, there are some questions coming in. Um, can I please just talk to us about how long the typical classes and the two by two format, please? Sure. Um, so all of our classes um, are a total of four contact hours per subject per week. And when I say contact hours, I mean face-to-face. -face. So within this, basically in, in foundation, for example, and, and in most of the diplomas, actually in all of the diplomas, we've divided those four contact hours into two two-hour blocks. So let's say you're taking marketing. You might have a two-hour marketing class on a Tuesday, and you might have a two-hour marketing class on a Friday. All right, so where we do have multiple units, uh, multiple classes within the units, you can choose the class times that, that work within your schedule, um, but it'll, each class will require you or each unit will require you to be face-to-face -face four hours per week. Okay. I think that's probably it, Chanel. Everyone else is just sort of saying thank you very much. Cool. Um, or oh, the English diagnostic, uh, uh, diagnostic, Georgina. So the enrollment information will be sent from tomorrow um, for anyone who's studying in trimester three. Our enrollment sessions are done by course. So um, if you're doing health, um, you'll be on the first day, which is the Wednesday. Uh, and that information will go out tomorrow. Um, and in that, there is an enrollment guide where we have information about completing the English diagnostic test. We also have a live enrollment session, uh, so you can enroll yourself. That's perfectly fine. We have a live chat function, so you can ask questions and you can follow along with that guide. But if you would like to attend our live session, for instance, if you were doing health, um, it would be myself and the academic coordinator for health, Catherine, and we will actually go through step by step, literally so that the end you will come out with your timetable um, for your classes for trimester three. We will have the English diagnostic and setting up your username and password and the email at the same time. I've just seen another question there, Justine, from Abby. It says, what are exam replacements and substitutes like? Um, and Abby's got another question there about Oh, Abby, on the email about the live enrollment, again, going out on Thursday. So check your emails, and sometimes our emails do go to your spam or your junk mail, so please make sure we start as well at the moment, um, because obviously everything that um, talks about the enrollment for trimester three will start coming out to those email addresses, both your Deacon College and the personal address that you applied with. And to answer your question about um, what the exam replacements and substitutes are like. So it depends from unit to unit. Um, within the foundation program, um, some of the units have changed the, the final assessment. So it's more of like a take home assessment task where you're given a set of questions on, let's say Monday, 
and you've got three days to complete a set of uh, questions and you submit that, that would count as your substitute. Um, but then in other units, we do have um, Moodle quizzes that were created, which basically offer, allow you to conduct your exam privately. Um, and we give students like a, a three hour window to complete their exam in. And yeah, it, it's, it's, it's actually pretty seamless, which is, which is nice. And you can do it from home um, rather than, you know, making things over complicated. So we do have alternate arrangements in place for all assessments. Um, especially because this is our this is our second trimester now um, doing online assessments. Anything else? I think we can probably wrap up, Chanel. Thank you very much, Chanel. That was really interesting and a lot of fun. No worries. Thank you everyone for participating. Um, we really look forward to you joining Deakin College in trimester three or trimester one next year if some of you are coming next year. Uh, yes, it was recorded, so if you would like a recording, I am just going to put an email. Susie, could you quickly put my email address in here so I can send a recording? Um, so Susie will just do that now while I'm talking. Maybe she won't. I'm going to do it. <laughs> On there. I did it. No, no. Okay, sorry, my dog's barking in the background, of course. <laughs> He's hungry and wants his dinner. <laughs> All right, so just email me if you want a copy of this recording. Um, we've got communication tomorrow and health on Friday. Again, they're all just a taster. Um, yes, they are obviously um, more in communications and health as this one was in our foundation, but it is just supposed to give you a taste of what online study is like. And hopefully before too long, we will see you back face-to-face uh, -face, um, at Deacon in Burwood or July. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Hopefully you learned something. If not, um, maybe marketing isn't for you, <laughs> but um, we'll see you. I'm sure at some point at Deacon College. Bye.